and welcome to Palace Intrigue. I am your host, Mark Francis. As for the on-again, off-again peace talks we thought were off, the latest is that Harry is said to want Meghan in on any meetings with King Charles. Royal expert Duncan Larcombe told New Magazine, Harry's been very quiet and so has Meghan. They've kept their heads down for a number of months and I think possibly now would be a good time for Harry to meet his father and for them to have a growing up conversation where some tensions and rawness of spare and everything else has perhaps died down. We'll point out Larcombe's comments came before the release of Heart of Invictus. Larcombe said, I would imagine Harry would want Meghan to be at the meeting. If Harry can patch things up with his family, then ultimately Meghan might be brought in from the cold as well. He went on, there's a way back for Harry, I think, because the royals have not slammed the door in his face. Meanwhile, there was talk that Meghan worries Kate would meddle in the peace talks. An insider has told Heat magazine Meghan will not be happy if he goes ahead with this. And Meghan hates the idea of not being there to defend herself. Meghan can't help but feel that Kate is meddling in their business. Royal author Tom Quinn told The Express, the whole emphasis between King Charles and Prince William is that you cannot go against the late Queen's firm belief that you can't be a part-time royal. You can't hobnob with celebrities in America for six months and then come back here and pick and choose which events you want to be part of. I don't think Charles and Williams will agree to that simply because Elizabeth hated the idea. Another insider doesn't think anything will be settled. While some may suggest it would be a good order for the family to settle their differences, perhaps even in the late Queen's memory, things are a long way off. Marina Hyde writes for The Guardian, the Windsors are all about forgiving and forgetting when it comes to Prince Andrew. Hyde wonders, do all fusses die down eventually, permitting the fussy to return to life largely as they knew it, while the public scratches its head and tries to recall precisely which scandal multi-million dollar out-of-court settlement Pizza Express branch it remembers them from? The question arises after the return of Prince Andrew to the royal tableau, driven last weekend by Prince William to church near Balmoral. The question arises after the return of Prince Andrew to the royal tableau. Driven last weekend by Prince William to church near Balmoral, where the Windsors are currently all gathered, with just the two notable exceptions. Welcome back, Uncle Andy. Typically, royal rehab efforts move at a more glacial pace. For example, the plan to make the British public fall back in love with Prince Charles after his divorce from Princess Diana and her tragic death was slated by courtiers to take years of slow and painstaking image work. But the picture of Andrew being driven last Sunday by William and Kate, the family's biggest current stars, comes merely one year after the Duke of York finally settled a civil claim against him by Virginia Joffrey. Joffrey was treated as a sex slave by Andrew's friend, the late international pedo trafficker Jeffrey Epstein, and long alleged that she was sexually assaulted by Andrew three times when she was 17. The Duke denies everything, and his reported £12 million settlement did not contain an admission of guilt. And there he was on Sunday, next to William up front, with Kate relegated to creasing her outfit on the back seat. As indicated, these royal stagings are so often wordless scenes, so we don't know the full story behind the picture. I suppose it's remotely possible that when the family were having breakfast that morning, Prince William clocked the presence of Prince Andrew and hissed, You need to spend a very long time in church indeed. In fact, you know what? I'll drive you there myself. Palace Intrigue will be right back. A source told Closer magazine, All Meghan is doing by going out with her engagement ring is fueling the rumours that she and Harry are having marriage troubles, which Harry is absolutely baffled by. He's been feeling anxious that she's trying to send some kind of message to him. She's saying it's simply a case of waiting for her engagement ring to be repaired, because it's in with the jewellers, which is true. But Harry doesn't understand why she won't wear something else from her extensive jewellery collection in its place. He's confused and hurt. Real commenter Diana Elsa wrote for news.com.au The Sussexes currently exist out of and above the celebrity ecosystem. They possess an otherness of them that sets them apart from your garden variety A-lister. At the moment, there is a world of difference between someone like Kim Kardashian, whose fame, wealth and nearly unthinkable reach is built solely on her, or at least her mother's, cunning and a woman whose global fame was entirely down to her membership via marriage of an ancient institution entirely founded on the concept of hereditary privilege. But the minute that at Meghan goes live, it will be like a reverse Cinderella scenario because they will be turning themselves back into ordinary pumpkins. No better, no worse than some bachelor semi-finalist keen to dip their wick into some of that nice teeth-whitening sponcon cashola. The Guardian gave Heart of Invictus four stars out of five and think it will keep the Netflix bosses happy for now. 
The garden's reasoning is partly because it is something concrete, something pre mexit and all the concomitant fuss. It also focuses on something that has proven itself to be a genuine force for good. Invictus Games, founded by Prince Harry, first held in London in 2014, the Invictus Games is an international sports and athletics event for physically and mentally injured military personnel that functions as a kind of multidisciplinary rehab process and celebration of all that can be conquered as a result of the awful experiences. Luckily, someone has kept a firm grip on Harry, heading off any sliding into personal vendettas before it can pollute the atmosphere. He is clearly still furious about the leak regarding his presence in Afghanistan that meant he had to leave ten weeks into his tour, but he mentions the lack of support around him when he faced his unravelling thereafter. You can practically hear the groan of effort as he pulls himself out of the potential dive into score-settling. What remains is a solid quintet of episodes that follow a handful of Invictus competitors from around the globe who are dealing with becoming physically disabled, mentally assaulted by post-traumatic stress disorder, and often some measure of both. And there you have it. If you'd like to email us, our address is thepalaceintrigue at gmail.com. Please head on over to YouTube or youtube.com and do a search for Palace Intrigue there and hit that subscribe button for us. It would really help us out. I'm Mark Francis. My thanks to John McDermott. This is Palace Intrigue and good times. Good times.